Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Dutch National Military Museum, taking a look at some of the unusual firearms in their rather extensive collection. Specifically today, we are taking a look at a semi-auto conversion of a Dutch Turnbolt Monlicker rifle. And this is both a very crude conversion and a really interesting conversion, because it does things differently. Uh, this is... All, all that is known for sure about this rifle is that it was manufactured between 1920 and 1933. Beyond that, nobody really knows. Now the back end is very crudely converted, but what, is, what has been done in general is this has had a Lewis gun bolt and gas system tacked onto the side, which is a really interesting way to do a semi-auto conversion. So since we don't know a whole lot else about it, let's just dive right in and take a look at how that works. So we'll start taking a look at this up at the muzzle. And what they've done here is actually add a gas trap chamber to the very front of the rifle. So the muzzle is right about here. We have this hollow chamber, which then has a smaller diameter muzzle. So gas gets, fills up in here, and back pressure from the small diameter muzzle forces some of it to go into this tube, down that 90 degree junction, and down the gas piston. Or rather, down to the gas piston which is located all the way here at the other end of the rifle. So the gas tube comes all the way back to here, where the receiver has been extended with this really crudely made and, and welded extension. It did actually break at some point, I suspect the very first time they fired the rifle, uh, and that's been just tacked back in place. But what's been done is we actually have a Lewis gun bolt and gas piston. Or actually, it's a Lewis gun gas piston with a Dutch Monlicker bolt that has been rebuilt to resemble a Lewis gun bolt. To access these parts, we're going to take off this rear cap. We have a little spring-loaded plunger right there. Then we can rotate this and remove it. It has four locking lugs that hold it in place. And it's interesting that those locking lugs are pretty nicely made. But the back tab of this thing is a mess. At any rate, once that's out, we can take out the recoil spring. And then we can pull out the bolt. Come back to here. And then we have a bolt stop. There we go. We have now removed the working parts from the gun. Uh, we have the gas piston, the bolt, the recoil spring, which actually lives up inside the gas piston. This is, as far as I can tell, an actual Lewis gun uh, main or, uh, operating rod gas piston. And then we have the bolt operating like a Lewis gun. So a big cam track cut in it. There's our firing pin. So this is now firing from an open bolt. Uh, the when the gas piston goes forward, it's going to bring the bolt with it. When the bolt, the front of the bolt hits the back of the chamber, the back of the barrel, it's going to stop. The piston keeps going under spring pressure, which forces the bolt to rotate, locks the lugs, and then as soon as it comes all the way forward, the firing pin protrudes out and fires the, uh, the cartridge. So you can see here, this on the bottom is an original Monlicker bolt. And that is our conversion bolt. So they've made it look like a Lewis gun bolt, uh, but the Lewis gun did not have a separate bolt head, and this is clearly a conversion of a Monlicker bolt body. Pretty cool and very unique. So with this type of conversion, it's necessary to extend uh, the back of the receiver to house things like the recoil spring and cover the rear end of the bolt's travel. And Weirdly, you know, the, the conversion work on the bolt was excellent, but this thing is really, really remarkably crude. Um, and you can see right here where it appears to have cracked in... well, it's very definitely cracked in half. But it's been tacked back together, and my assumption is, given how this is connected, uh, it probably wasn't heat treated when it was rewelded or something like that, and it cracked on the first firing. You can see up here the original serial number and proof marks of the Monlicker rifle that this was built on. And the sights and the front end of the stock have all been left intact as they were. 
Unfortunately, a lot of components are missing from this, including the nose cap, and the trigger guard, and the magazine. Uh, but that's okay, because I don't think anyone would want to fire this anyway. As you know, if you've watched a lot of these videos, I am very interested in semi-automatic conversions and early semi-automatic rifles. So this was a particularly cool gun to get to take a look at. It's the first time I've seen someone actually use a Lewis gun to do this sort of conversion. So very interesting. Um, a big thank you to the Dutch Military National Military Museum for allowing me to get my grubby mitts on this thing and take a close look at it and bring it to you guys. If you are in Holland, definitely uh, take the time to visit the museum. They have a brand new facility, and it's a really impressive setup. Uh, tanks, airplanes, small arms, everything you need to know about Dutch military history. If you can't make it to Holland, and you just enjoy watching this on the internet, I would appreciate it if you uh, could take a moment to check out my Patreon page. It is support from the folks there that makes it possible for me to travel to these places and bring you guns like this one. Thanks for watching.